Hi there, and welcome to Octoprint on Air number 56. I'm your host, Gina Heuske, still with our B in my name, and yeah, welcome! It's uh, admittedly been a while since the last one of these, uh, and I'll explain in a bit why that was, but first of all, let me quickly um, yeah, give you a quick intro about what we are going to talk about today. As always, it will be uh, what I've been up to, what the next steps are, and then we'll have a quick look at the stats. There will be a new Q&A segment here uh, this time, because I no longer do these during the regular recordings, and instead I just uh, throw up a regular uh, yeah, roll call, basically, on uh, Patreon and GitHub supporters, uh, GitHub sponsors um, to allow people to hand in some questions, and uh, once there are enough there, then I actually do also some Q&A stuff, so at least that's the plan. So far, not enough questions ever <laughs> to, to, to start that again, but yeah, so uh, let's get right onto it, I guess. So what I've been up to. Uh, the last one of these uh, was in December 2023, so yeah, it's actually been three months, and I'm really, really sorry for that. Um, the thing is that, first of all, I did my usual Christmas uh, break thing until around mid-January, as announced. And then when I was just about to record one of these, I got uh, caught by a quiet nasty sinusitis that took me out of uh, office basically for a week. And right after this, I actually had a planned sc uh, surgery scheduled. So um, that took me then out for another uh, few days. Wait, nah, well, let's say two weeks, actually. So all in all, um, uh, my, my time from mid, mid February to uh, early March was spent either sneezing or trying not to sneeze and not to cough because it was an abdominal surgery and that kind of hurt doing that then. But um, yeah, so you really do not have anything to worry about. Uh, the surgery, as I said, was planned uh, long uh, long ago, and uh, I simply needed to take care of something that could have become a problem had I not taken care of it now, but now I have taken care of it, and things are great, and recovery is going great, and yeah, uh, all in all, um, the recovery was also way less bumpy than from my meniscus surgery back in 2021, so uh, that was nice. And right now I'm really just looking forward to finally being allowed to go back on into the boulder gym, because uh, currently I'm still on a three-week sports ban because of the surgery from my surgeon. But uh, yeah, I hope that I can finally go back to my regular climbing schedule of twice per week. Okay, so that was that. Um, and the reason pretty much why you're only seeing me now. Um, what else have I been up to apart from being sick <laughs> or being out of out of order for, for, for some other reason? Um, yeah, so you hopefully saw that there now have not only been one, but actually three release candidates for 1.10.0. Um, the first one I released on January 31st, the second one on February 12th, and the third one just actually uh, as of recording this yesterday um, on March 18th. And currently we are looking at something like uh, 1,700 instances that have had one of these RCs installed and uh, 30,000 printing or over 30,000 printing hours uh, on the RCs. The exact numbers I can no longer provide uh, you with because um, the anonymous usage tracking, which I use for tracking this stuff, uh, only uh, keeps uh, 60 days. And as you might have noticed, January 31st uh, versus March 19th, which is the day when I'm recording this there, that, that does no longer match that. So um, the oldest stuff has aged out by now, um, but I have some screenshots at least that I will be able to use for prepping the release announcement when it when it's time to do that. Yeah, so um, all in all, these, this release candidate phase, phase has so far been quite uneventful, I have to say. I mean, of course, there is the usual stuff here and there of, of minor issues that uh, yeah, third-party plugins might run into, and I solved some of these. Uh, we had one problem with uh, um, certain PIP versions on pre-releases um, pre of Octopi 0180, 
causing issues installing this stuff, but that is easily fixed with one command line call, which you then have to use if you run into this. All of this is documented in the release phase and release candidate phase. And this is also something that I will throw into the final release notes so that people know what to do should they get caught by that. But yeah, it should not uh it should not be an issue for most of you out there because as I said it only caused um caused, caused problems with pre-releases of Octopi 018. Um and yeah so pretty much most of my January was spent prepping the first release candidate then most of February of, of the parts of February that I could actually work uh, where were spent uh, uh, on, on prepping the second release candidate and then also the third one. And then all of March so far has also been uh, mostly RC prep work. So that pretty much has been, yeah, the, the release candidates so far have been my, my whole of 2024, basically. And something that I noticed uh, with the first release candidate already and just now again with release candidate number three is uh yeah i got some confused and even yeah slightly angry responses on the inclusion of the achievement plugin so uh i just want to take the chance here to repeat um why that even exists and uh, that is also something that i then will include in the final release notes so the thing is, when I pushed out this call, uh, uh, call for help or cry for help back in October because of the whole funding situation uh, not looking very, very good anymore and me really, really worrying about uh, no, not, not being able to do this anymore, which you then uh, helped me to solve quite immediately, which was amazing. Um, uh, one thing that, that I got a lot of feedback on back then was that a ton of you didn't even know that Octoprint is crowdfunded uh, and that my full-time work, or actually that I work full-time on it and that all of this full-time work is crowdfunded. So um, in general, there seems to have been a huge communication issue. <laughs> and uh, um, I started brainstorming about ideas on how to make this more transparent, but without becoming too annoying. So what I did not want was basically plastering Octoprint with banners, constantly telling you, by the way, this is being funded through people like you and blah, 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 and such. Because I figured that would, yeah, that would just be become obnoxious quite, quite fast. And I did not want that. Um, and uh, actually for, for some years now, I had been thinking about some kind of way to remind people about this when they have had some X hours of, of successful prints or something like that. And this idea came back to me back then. And so first I had the idea to turn to, to create a little, a little stats plugin basically, which would keep track of things like that and then push out reminders. And then I figured reminders are a bit weird. Wouldn't it be nicer to maybe if we have stats any any anyhow to 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 create something like achievements, you know, like fun little things that people will maybe actually find uh, find interesting or enjoy hunting basically, and um, which would on the other hand also allow me to remind people uh, about the positive effect effect basically that that Octoprint might have on their workflows and how it is being uh, funded and um, that way making it more transparent what is going on and how things work and uh, that um, yeah that that the future of of working on this for me at least um, pretty much relies on their coming there their, their being enough income to uh, allow me to do this full time and full time is the only way that this can still be done because yeah even full time isn't enough time anymore uh, with a project of this size as a single person um so the idea basically was you get some stats and hopefully also some fun achievements and i basically get some regular reminders in front of you uh in the shape of a little note that is included on some of the achievements, not all of them, but some of them, um, that Octopi, uh, Octoprint <laughs> relies on funding by the community to keep going. And if you don't like this, 
uh, I implemented it as a bundled plugin. Every single plugin in Octoprint, apart from the plugin manager itself, can be disabled through the plugin manager. So if you do not like this functionality, you can just disable it and you will not there will be no resources taken up by it anymore on your system. There will be no achievement pop-ups that you will see. There will be nothing like that. So um, that is as easy as that, basically. And to be honest, there's there was also another thing which made me implement this as achievements instead of just stats. It was such a ton of fun, really. Like, um, um it, you know, that, that happened at the time when uh, I was still really, really, really stressed and exhausted from all of this burden of worrying about funding. And it was a small, tiny feature that didn't really need a lot of time and that I could quickly basically implement down within a few days. And it was a ton of fun brainstorming with some buddies about the possible achievements and giving them nice names and then yeah, finding some icons to work with them. And so this was really just something that was so much less stressful and brain nuking than my usual tasks when working on Octoprint that frankly, I really needed that. So that is, if, if the other argument doesn't, so, uh, doesn't, um, doesn't help here, maybe this one does. Um, so it, it was something I really, really enjoyed implementing and Frankly, isn't this okay, okay here and there too, you know, so that I uh, also have some fun at work and, and not just constantly doing stuff that needs to be done instead of maybe also doing stuff that is fun to do. And in this case, I mean, it also has a nice side effect, hopefully, to, to help in securing the future of Octoprint. So it's not like it does nothing. It maybe does not do much sensible for you personally, but it might do a lot for Octoprint. So that's that. So long story short, no, this isn't just a gimmick, even though it might look like one. And even though it was a lot of fun to implement, there was a reason for that. The reason is me trying to ensure Octoprint's future. And if you do not want this stuff, just disable the plugin. It's called Achievements. Uh, you can find it right within the plugin manager and you can just disable it and that's it. Then you will no longer see it. I can also not not just enable it again if I want to. Like you are the you are the the boss basically here. Uh, whatever you disable stays disabled until you enable it again. Um, okay. And another thing that was going on at the start of February actually um, was I found a security issue in Orca Slicer. So um, the problem was that Orca Slicer would leak your Octoprint API key and also the host address and such in the slice G code file. Um, there, is, there is this huge block of, um, of settings used for slicing the file in every G code file generated by Orca Slicer. And that also contained these settings. And not only for Octoprint API keys, but also for other host software like Moonraker and such. So anything that gets configured within that could land in there. Um, and this is an issue that probably originated in a uh, Prusa Slicer version, uh, which, which had this very same issue and until, until version 2.4.0. Uh, so anything older than 2.4.0, but all, already having an, an Octoprint integration also would leak your um, API key, which I only learned when I started hunting down where this was coming from. And so, uh, yeah, so first of all, uh, big, big kudos to Soft Fever, uh, Soft Fever the maintainer of Orca Slicer. Um, I mailed them early February, like I think on February the 6th or something, and I already had an answer uh, on, on February 7th within a few hours only. And um, they pushed out a fixed release after, I think, two or three weeks. So, um that was a really great response there and a very, very nice interaction as well. So very friendly and nice to each other and such. So that was completely enjoyable. I think, I hope, I hope for both of us. Um, and 
yeah, so long story short, if you haven't already and are using Orca Slicer, then please update to version 1.9.1 at the minimum. I also saw that the, the, the beta, uh, beta version of version 2.0 has just been released, so if you want, then maybe update to that. I, I think it should contain the patch. Um, and if you are in the habit of sharing your G-code files with others publicly and so use Orca Slicer and share your G-code files with someone uh, whom you would not also want to give your Octoprint API key, then now it would be time to rotate your Octoprint API key that you use with your Slicer. Um, in general, I can only recommend to create a dedicated user in Octoprint for uploading files without admin rights. So basically just a user that is allowed to either to only upload files, or if you also want to use some status uh, back channel um, in your in your slicer, then 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 also the status and the uh, I think settings read or something like that. But uh, definitely no admin, um, no admin rights, and uh, that way should some slicer for some reason throw your api key in the generated g code, fi code files and you then share them with others at least it would not leak um yeah the keys to your the full full yeah the the, the keys with admin access to your octoprint instance I, I, usually uh even a leaked key should not be a problem because you are supposed to only run Octoprint or only expose Octoprint to secure networks. You are not supposed to expose it on the public internet unless you have a VPN in front of it. And I keep saying that and saying that and saying that and saying that. But I know some of you don't listen. So if you did not listen, if you have your Octoprint publicly exposed and if you also use Orca Slicer in versions prior to 191, your, your key might have leaked. Rotate it, please. Um, because I know that it is a bit tricky maybe to figure out on your own whether you are affected or not if you used Orca Slicer. Uh, I'm also working on an update for the bundled file check plugin. Currently, the file check plugin in Octoprint that uh, only um, checks your files for certain slicer misconfigurations that we've seen a lot of where placeholders from older versions of Cura were used in newer versions of Cura and didn't probably get replaced, leading to issues during printing with files containing these. So um, that was where the file uh, check plugin was created to check uploaded files for these segments. And uh, I will push out an update for that file check plugin that also detects these leaked keys. And um, we warn you if you upload any files with these credentials contained. I already did that. That works great. That is something that I still managed to do in early February. But what I also want to add to it, and this is why there has not been yet an update, is that it allows you to scan your already uploaded files for issues. This is something where I'm still working on, but I think that will really be uh, yeah, helpful not only for the current problem that we are looking at, but any kind of stuff that in the future might require uh, a detection in, in the file checks plugin could then also be used to, to, to scan uh, through all of your existing files. So um, you would get warned about issues, not only on upload, but also when you have already uploaded stuff months or years ago. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, what are the next steps? So I, yeah, so basically one of the very next steps while I'm waiting for the uh, next release candidate to be tested by the community is uh, to actually tackle these changes this, that I still want to do with the file check plugin. Um, so with the scan functionality for leaked keys. And I then also need to write an accompanying uh, FAQ entry that explains to you why that is an issue and such, because we already have one for the aforementioned issue with the slicer placeholders, and then some other one needs to be phrased and all that. This is, of course, not a lot of work, but yeah, writing something so that everyone understands what to do is always something where I need some time. Um, yeah. So once that is out of the way, what I obviously also want to do ASAP is uh, release 1.10.0 stable. 
as I said, this is uh, a bit yeah relying on 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 seeing how the third release candidate fares, but I'm quite optimistic that there will be no big surprises there uh, because so far it has looked quite stable indeed already. And um, the only stuff that I had to actually change for RC3 were minor things and one security issue that I got reported in the meantime that I decided to that that I decided was minor enough that we could just push it out with the release candidate. Um, and another thing I I mentioned I think in the November or October Octoprint on air that uh, there is currently a blocking issue with the with the new camera stack that I, around a year ago or so I wrote for Octopi. Uh, based on camera streamer, um, where the the stream is simply insta uh, inst unstable and uh, regularly freezes and such, and um, a server restart is then needed to keep things uh, make things going again. And that is something where I also have some ideas how to maybe, yeah, work around that from my side, uh, because sadly there has no has been no progress yet upstream. On fixing this uh, problem in camera stream itself, I guess Ayufan simply has his hands full with a lot of other stuff. So absolutely no blame here. I know how things can go. It's just that this is yeah, it's basically blocking the whole rollout and um, uh, limiting the testing a lot as well. And I would like to see how things fare uh, once that has been worked around. So. I have the idea of either adding a watchdog that regularly checks if the stream is still alive and well. Or um, and and if not restarting it, or maybe it will actually suffice to make sure that um, a snapshot is taken within the first few minutes of the server being up. For some reason, uh, it's staying idle too long seems to cause issues. So um, that would be the current ideas that I have, and uh, yeah, that will have that will simply need some 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 experimenting and refleshing and and checking out things and. Hoping something works. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I've also already started on the first things that will go into 111. Oh, there's a lot of stuff uh, still in the backlog. It also needs tackling and some smaller and larger bits that are not uh, immediately attached to one specific version, but which I want to get around to do as well. And so, yeah, that will basically be my my rest of March and uh, huge parts of April from the looks of it. So, yeah. And that only leaves us with a quick look at the stats, actually. And since it's uh, that since it's currently a release candidate uh, uh, phase, um, I thought I would I would share with you how things look there. So this is the, the internal dashboard that only I have access to of the anonymous usage tracking server itself. Um, and I can filter for 110.0.rc here. And you see here the rollout of uh, the second RC in green, uh, while the first one was already um, yeah, going down. And, um, and then here, released yesterday, the, the, the light blue that is the third release candidate and it's already overtaken the first one and I hope it will also overtake the second one sometime within the next two or three days. That is usually how long it takes uh, to be become the majority. People are already printing mostly with that though, however, which is good. Um, and it already has seen something like um, uh, 231 hours of print time, actually, which is kind of nice, considering that it's only been out for a bit over 24 hours. And um, there are already also 123 people who have updated versus 1,460 um, that are running RC2. So there is still some, some way to go here. All in all, over the past 60 days, we have seen, as I said, 1,763 unique instances running one of the RCs. Uh, which printed around 31,000 hours or something like 3.5 years all in all. So um, that thing is being used, which is good. Um, yeah, that would basically be that uh, with regards to stats. As usual, if you want to 
uh, take a look at stats yourself. Anytime that you want, you can take a look at data.octoprint.org, which will give you the exported stats from the anonymous usage, usage tracking over the past 30 days or over the past seven days. I have no idea what happened here. Oh, it could be maybe that this was the change of... No, not from the time. I, I just thought it was maybe the, the, the start of summertime in the US, but that doesn't make that much sense. No, never mind. I have no idea what happened there, but it's fun to see. Um, and you have uh, yeah the usual stuff like your version distribution, stable versus release candidates. We see also here the, the current stats of which release candidates are still being run. And there apparently are still people who are running 1.9.0 RC5 and even 1.7 RC2. People, you really need to upgrade to a stable and current version, please. Um, printing stats the past 30 days within a, with, a, with a total duration of 280 years. Python stats. We are still at 4% Python 2. People, please update to Python 3. It's not that tricky and it gives you a huge performance boost and tons of plugins are now Python 3 only. So um, yeah, Python dist version distribution server environment most commonly used is Linux, but as you see also Windows, Mac and FreeBSD. Uh, number of bits, core count, client environment stats. And that is something that is actually uh, what I use for determining what kind of um, uh, JavaScript uh, features I can rely on because uh, most of you already use Octoprint with servers that support ES9. So this is where I get my information on that. Um, operating system, some Raspberry Pi related information, Octopi up to date build. And what I also find interesting here and there is the firmware stats. So uh, which firmware um, versions and brands are being used and which firmware groups are being used. So the majority of you all is running Marlin in one kind or another, then Prusa Marlin comes next, Reality Marlin comes next, Clipper. Yes, you can run Octoprint with Clipper. No, there is no problem there. And hint, hint, there is an achievement. Um, and yeah, there actually even still are some SmoothieWare users out there and Melian and Sailfish, which, yeah. And the good old Anet AA that will burn down your house. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, back to me. Yeah. That was the stats. And yeah, so that is basically all that I have for you today. Because yeah, as I said, it has been a lot of release candidate specific stuff that I've done, which is a bit boring to talk about because it basically boils down to, and then I fixed another bug. Um, or, and then I spent two days hunting down a bug and then fixed it with one line. Also happens, though this time, thankfully, it wasn't that disturbing. Uh, because frankly, that always is a bit weird when you spend so much time hunting down something and then you only need to change maybe one line or something. That is, you never know if you f should feel very clever then or very, very stupid. It's tricky. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so that was basically all uh, that I had report had to report today, and I hope I can talk about some more about some more stuff next time. Um, and yeah, other than that, uh, I, I I I try to make sure that the next one won't be in three months, but in around one. Um, and uh, yeah, patrons and GitHub sponsors will get an early release. And then a week later or so, uh, I will publish this one uh, for everyone. And that is basically how I do it these days, ever since I stopped doing the live streams, which caused me a ton of overhead in Oga and uh, hardware worries and gray hair. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, as always, thank you for being here. Um, I hope it was interesting and you yeah, got some new info that you didn't know yet. And as always, of course, also stay healthy and happy printing. Bye. <laughs>